Hi guys, welcome uh, to the Fighting Writing channel. Glad you're joining us. Today we're going to be looking at different types of paint and whether Games Workshop paints are worth the money. See you after this. Okay, so I wanted to have a look at the different types of paints that you might have access to when you're beginning the hobby. Whether that's running a hobby club in school, if you've got young children, or if you're just getting into it and you, you've got those first miniatures and you're looking at the different paints and it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, now I'm gonna use Games Workshop paints, Citadel paints as my model paint example today. But everything kind of I'm talking about with that could be said about Army Painter, Vallejo, Two Thin Coats. There are loads of different specific miniature paints out there and there are much better videos on YouTube kind of comparing those with each other to see which is the best miniature paint. But I wanted to have a look at what would happen or, or kind of are they worth it compared to, you know, you can get these kind of cheap acrylics from the works. Um, if you're in a school, every school has got these kind of poster paints. You know, do you really need to buy miniature paints to paint miniatures? Um, and going into this, I had, you know, a couple of preconceptions, um, things I was slightly interested to see how they would work. Um, model paints are obviously designed for it, but even miniature paints like the GW Citadel paints are generally a little bit thick. So normally what you would do when you're painting is you would thin them down. And I'll do a video on, on those kind of painting, basic painting tips later on. But normally you would thin them down. But for this, I wanted to use them as is, straight out of the pot, straight out of the tube or whatever, um, to see how they go and see what kind of coverage you get. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a stress test at the end to see if they will stand up to being played with, um, especially with children with wet or sticky fingers as well. You know, we know what children are like. So stick with it and I'll see you after this. Okay, we're going to start with these three Stormcast Eternals that come from the Warhammer Alliance box that I've talked about before. And the paints we're going to use are a Citadel Miniatures Blue um, from Games Workshop, a Baker Ross poster paint that you might have in school, and just a cheap acrylic paint from the works. And I want to see how they go onto the figure. Um, my big concerns with these are under a toughness test later. Um, I haven't watered down any of the paints at all. Um, because I want to see how they would apply if you were applying them in a school. You haven't got time to water them down. Um, so I'm just putting them on straight out of the, the tube or the tub or the pot um, to see how they go on. Um, first thing, I expected, when I kind of went into this, I thought the cheap acrylic would be too thick and would start to fill in a lot of the details. Now, it is a lot thicker than the other two paints. It's certainly a lot thicker than the Citadel acrylic paint. Um, but it didn't seem to fill in any of the detail, but it wasn't very fun to paint with on the detail. It was thick, it was claggy. Um, it was also a lot harder to clean off the brush afterwards than the Citadel one. But surprisingly, it didn't um, fill in a lot of the details. It, you didn't lose a lot of detail painting with that. And the same with the poster paint, really. Um, the poster paint kind of felt like painting with watercolours. It gave no cover whatsoever um, it was really it kept moving around when you're trying to brush over it it, it just pushed it around rather than applying more paint um, it just wasn't very pleasant um, to use whereas the Citadel one went on nicely um, it was you know it was quite patchy because this was a first coat even though it was a base paint um, there's different types of Citadel paint there's base coats there's layer coats and, and various other things and um, base ones obviously uh, as the name suggests are the ones that you kind of want to be putting down on the base they've got a lot more pigment in them they're a lot thicker um and they they kind of cover a lot better but this was still was still a little bit patchy um as you can see but it was certainly a lot easier to paint with the citadel paint than it was with the standard acrylic and certainly than it was with the poster paint which i, I really can't say how horrible it was but after one coat you can see that they are all very patchy so they're definitely going to need a second coat um and this is where i wondered um with so the acrylic i thought maybe that would be a lot thicker after the second coat um but this was the Citadel paint after two coats. You can see it's a lot more solid. It's much better coverage. Um, a really nice finish. Um, this was with two standard coats. It wasn't two watered down coats. Sorry, Duncan Rhodes. It wasn't two thin coats. Um, it was just two standard coats. Um, but we haven't lost any of the detail. You can see it on the kind of lapel. This was the bog standard acrylic from the works. It's still patchy after two coats. It's not bad. You've still got that detail, but it is starting to clump a little bit here. 
you know, if I think if it had a third coat, which it would definitely need, it would you would start to lose some detail there. Certainly some of the finer detail. Uh, with the post paint, after two coats, it was still awful. Um, this would probably need six, seven. Oh, who knows how many different coats to try and get any kind of good coverage um, so that you know the takeaway for this is don't use poster paints to paint figures definitely because it was just not fun to paint it wasn't easy it was horrible it didn't cover so we need to see how tough the paints would be as well um, so I want to see if the kids are playing with them in your class or in, in a gaming situation they're rubbing them they're picking them up does it rub off very easy this is the standard acrylic and yeah it rubbed off particularly on the high areas the flat areas stuck a little bit better but the raised areas didn't and i thought well children have always got wet hands or sticky hands is that going to make a difference um and sure enough with some water on my thumb it definitely came off a lot easier so if children are playing with them and they've got wet hands or sticky hands that acrylic paint is not going to hold up without some kind of varnish the poster paint came off as soon as you looked at it really and remember all of these figures all of these miniatures have been primed properly with a good undercoat primer so it shouldn't be coming off at all that just rubbed off and um the same i mean with the the water here from from the water cup it just it was like giving it a bath and it was coming off it it's not going to hold up at all um yeah, it was fascinating to watch. It just it was worse than I thought it would. And then the Citadel one didn't really come off at all. I had to, you know, with a lot of pressure, it came off on some of the raised areas. Um, but very, very, you can only just about see it on the tip of, of the thing on his leg, on his thigh. Um, and water made no difference whatsoever. It definitely was um, sealed. This is without any varnish or anything like that. Water wasn't shifting it at all. It just um, stood up to the test time. So I think that would definitely hold up to kids playing with it. Okay, so this was interesting. When I went into it, I expected um, this paint, the, the acrylic paints, to be really thick and start to cloud the detail pretty much straight away. And it was hard to paint with. It was a lot thicker on the brush. It wasn't as easy to get a nice tip on the brush with and to wipe off the excess. Um, it was harder to wash the brush afterwards. It took a lot more action in the water to wash the brush. Uh, but it didn't cloud the details on the Mini as much as I thought it would. Um, the problem is it just didn't cover very well. So the second coat started to not so much cloud the detail that's on there, but it started to add its own detail. So to add lines, brush stroke lines and things like that was starting to build up and create its own extra detail. So rather than actually filling in the detail on the miniature, it started to add and make it look a little bit rubbish really and a little bit chunky and blobby. Um, whereas, <laughs> The poster paint, um, leave that for posters, just don't bother. It was awful to paint with, gave no coverage whatsoever, it was far too thin. Um, it, it, like I said in the video, you know, it, it pushed the paint around when I was painting with it rather than going, you know, adding to it. It just was horrible to paint with. It doesn't, it doesn't hold up to being brushed with your fingers, wet or dry, so it just it isn't worth it. Um, what I will say about these kind of acrylic paints is they are great for if you're painting terrain or buildings or things like that. Definitely use these for that. Don't go using your expensive little tubs of paints um, for your terrain. It's just a bit of a waste, really. You're better off using this kind of stuff. It doesn't matter about the thickness for that. You're going to be using bigger brushes for dry brushing, things like that. That's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it's great, it's cheap. Use those kind of acrylic paints for that. Post paint, put in the bin, or use for painting posters. So I think the ultimate really is, are these little pots, they're about three pounds, 50, four pounds, I think, last time I bought some, which is more expensive than something with that much paint in. So I get the con, I get why people want to use these. They're a lot cheaper for a lot more. But these work, okay? These hold up to, the test at the end they hold up to the stress test um, and that's the same with any of the kind of Vallejo ones we've got army painters um, you know uh, Vallejo uh, this, these are new ones dark stars they're awesome as well you know all of those kind of miniature specific paints they will hold up and they're easier to paint with they're more fun to paint with so if you're somebody just getting into the hobby you're going to stick at it longer because it's easier it's more fun if you start a hobby and you start painting with these your paint job is going to end up looking like this doesn't matter how good you are it's going to end up looking like this and you're going to be put off a little bit so i would say are games workshop paints under the variants worth it yes 
definitely get them for your miniatures from day one you only need to get a few get a handful of colors um, they normally have offers on in Games Workshop or, or when you buy online from Vallejo or, or whoever. They normally have like packs that you can buy, makes them a little bit cheaper, but they're definitely worth the investment. Okay, hopefully you agree. If you do, like, subscribe. It just makes it so much more motivational for me to actually carry on if you don't you know, kind of put these videos out and get nothing. It's a little bit of a downer. So like, subscribe, share with your friends, do all of that kind of stuff, and I'll see you next time.